This is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be looking at making some frequency tables and frequency histograms in Excel. We're also going to be using the TI-84 to generate some sample data. So I'm going to start by taking my TI-84 here, and I'm going to go to Apps and go to the Probability Simulator. And we're going to go down here to this. It. Should be getting close. There we go, ProbSim. So I'll click on that and let's just simulate rolling a, a standard die, just just one die at a time and so we get here we can press enter to continue we're going to roll a dice or roll a die so we're going to choose number two it should already be set up let's check it out to where we're rolling one standard six sized six sided die everything is equal probability on that so that's going to be okay and let's go to we can roll once here and we get a six. Let's add another ten to that and we get one die there. Okay, and let's add another ten. So now we get twenty one data points. Okay, so if I go to escape and then show table. This should show them all 21 data points. Use the up and down arrows. Now let's just get this data over here in Excel. Let's see here if I can get all of this showing at once. Try that again. Okay, there's the calculator. And then here is Excel. Let's see them side by side. Okay, so here's our uh, data here. Let's put it right here. Okay, that's our row. I'll just call it row. Okay, and we just type it in. Six, enter, four, three, three, five, three, fours. And you know what? While we're at it, let's just let's just do a a roll, um, a roll number, okay, which is just a count of which of our order. So we could do this as one, and we can watch how we could do this. We can say equals. I can click on that, and I'll say a three, and I'll say plus one, so it adds one. And if I copy that, Control C, and then come down here and do Control V to paste. That'll come on down, and I think we have 21, so I can stop there. It's kind of help keep keep me in track of where we at, where we are. So we've gone through. Uh oh, we should be through eight. Let's see. Let's try this again. Six, four, two threes, five, and three fours. Okay, and go back over here go down a little bit more, we'll get a few more, oops, not that far, okay, well, 11 is also, oh, let me go up to 9, okay, 9 is 2, and then 5, 4, 2, 5, 6, 1, 3, okay, see the rest, now, unfortunately, there's no avoiding getting this typed in at some point. Okay. Six, five, one, two, two. Okay, so we have all the data in. At this point, I don't really need the calculator anymore. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, and let's get the Excel back up here full screen. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do is I just want to kind of clean this up a little bit. So, I'm going to make it so that these four rows, columns will be centered. I could also go through and make them 
have some borders like this. Click on this and this. So now if I print this out, this will have borders there. I can even do things like, you know, a darker border. Um, you know, if I want a darker border here, for example, or, or here. Okay. Now, actually I don't need this here, so I'm just going to get rid of those. Okay, now we notice that our possible data values, x's, are either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 dots on the top. Again, I will center that up, and we'll make a border. Now, what we would think is that the theoretical probabilities of these particular x values are uh, equals 1 sixth, 1 divided by 6. And we can copy that because they're all the same. Paste them here. And if I do the sum of the probabilities, which I can get by hitting this and sum those up, so I'm summing these guys up right here, that should sum up to 1. So that's good news. I can take these if I don't like that format. I can change them to percentages, add some more decimal places. I can also change them even to a fraction. Uh, go to number, and we have some other options. Let's see, actually just go to uh, here, and we can go in and go to fraction and up to one digit, up to two digits, so for example. And now we could have those as, as fractions if we want. And so now we have our little probability table. Let's actually do the relative, not relative frequency, the actual frequency, and then we'll figure out a relative frequency from our experimental data. Okay, so now what we want to do is count all the ones over here. So we're going to use a function that's called count if. So I'm going to push equal count if, and it actually tells you, uh, if you forget, it'll show you, you can go to the f of x here and it will show you how to do this. But I'm going to do count if. I need to give it a range, so I'm just going to highlight my data. Then I'm going to say comma, quote, equals a 1, quote, parentheses. And that will count how many times we actually have a 1 there. We should be able to find them. There's 1 there. Should be one more. There it is. And those are the only ones we have. Now, I can copy this formula and paste it down below. Actually, I can... I can actually even do this. Instead of putting equals 1, I can actually click on this cell here, and it should work out the same. Now, if I specify this range that it's always in column B, so that's a dollar in front of that, dollar in front of the 3, a dollar in front of that B, and that 23. So that specifies that range exactly that. But then let's leave this D3 without the dollars. Then when I copy this, Control-C and paste it, Control-V, you'll see that the first part of this doesn't change, but it always goes two cells to the left for the second one. So it's saying, now this should count all everything that's the same as D4, which is a 2. So if I were to change this to a 5, for example, or a, a 4, it's going to count those amounts there. So, But I want to count the 2. Now, we can also add those up. And that's our n, our sample size. Okay. And we can do a relative frequency. So we can take this amount and divide it by the 21. Again, we want that specifically to be that cell. So now when I copy, let's make it a percentage. And maybe a couple more decimal places. Center it up. Now when I copy that, and paste it, we get the percentages. Of course, when we add those up, we'll get 100% or 1. <coughs> and
And so there is a relative frequency, uh, frequency and relative frequency, along with the theoretical probabilities of each of the possible possible uh, values of this random variable x, which is the uh, number of dots on the top of a die when we roll it. Now let's actually make a, a frequency histogram. Actually, I want to make a relative frequency histogram. So I want to take these percentages and graph them as a bar graph, which is what a histogram is. So we can go to insert, and we're going to insert a column graph. So we go to column, just choose this very first one. Okay, and we have this. This is technically discrete data, so these bars probably shouldn't touch. So we can format this, but I do want the gap to be a lot smaller, make the bars a little thicker, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the border and tell it to put a, a solid black line around them. And so now we have this. In this particular case, I don't need this, this um, legend here, so we can have that. Then I can also do a little bit more. Now, for the, uh, the axis down here, notice it doesn't, if I change these numbers here, it doesn't change there, the labels at the bottom, because these labels are automatically just one, two, three. They start up like that. What we want to do is to choose them a different way. So we're going to right click and say go to select data. And so the horizontal categories, we go to edit, and we want them to come from this right here. If I wanted to change the name of the series, I could go to here and say edit, and I could type in a name there if I wanted to. So I can leave it like that. I can do uh, uh, some other things. I probably should go ahead and put some titles on here. So if I go to uh, layout, we can see some things here that we can add. We can add a title. I usually like this one. And so we could type in right here some title like uh, relative these a rolling a single die n equals 21. Okay, and so now we have that. If we want to format things, we can do all kinds of formatting, like, like maybe make that a little bit smaller, uh, highlight these stuff there, the text. Maybe change this down a bit to say 14. I can click on this and move this around. I can click here and change the colors. I can click here, right click and do some other you know things like format the chart area, uh, fill it in with a picture picture or a texture. Uh, oh let's do you know something like this. So we can put that. maybe that's too busy. We can go back and say, okay, we don't like that. We might be able to do this with a uh, just a solid color of some kind, maybe a light purple. And so we got us a nice, pretty looking graph. And that graph is now um, dynamically based on the data. So if this wasn't a two, suppose this was a uh, a one. Now that would change the data automatically and notice that the um, if I do that it's going to change let's say let's change one of these here change this 4 to a 5 notice it changed the data in the table changed everything here on the relative frequencies and that let's go back to the actual data that we generated and so there's an example of how we can generate a table. There's a little bit of formatting there. There's a little bit about doing formulas, a little bit about how, how to use the count if function to help us find frequencies, relative frequencies, and then also a little bit about drawing graphs. So there's a quick introduction to a few things that we can use in Excel.